Robert Louis Stevenson, born Robert Louis Balfour Stevenson in 1894, was a Scottish novelist, poet and travel writer, most noted for Treasure Island, Kidnapped, Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and A Child's Garden of Verses, Major Works, Treasure Island, originally The Sea Cook, A Story for Boys, is an adventure novel, a tale of pirates and buried gold. Its influence is enormous on popular perceptions of pirates, including such elements as treasure maps marked with an X, schooners, the black spot, tropical islands, and one-legged seamen bearing parrots on their shoulder. Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, is a gothic novella, first published in 1886. The work is also known as The Strange Case of Jekyll Hyde, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or simply Jekyll and Hyde. It is about a London legal practitioner, named Gabriel John Utterson who investigates strange occurrences related to his old friend, Dr. Henry Jekyll. The Black Arrow, published in 1888, tells the story of Richard, Dick, Shelton during the Wars of the Roses, how he becomes a knight, rescues his lady Joanna Sedley, and obtains justice for the murder of his father, Sir Harry Shelton. Outlaws in Tunstall Forest organized by Ellis Duckworth, whose weapon and calling card is a black arrow, cause Dick to suspect that his guardian Sir Daniel Brackley and his retainers are responsible for his father's murder. Dick's suspicions are enough to turn Sir Daniel against him, so he has no recourse but to escape from Sir Daniel and join the outlaws of the black arrow against him. This struggle sweeps him up into the greater conflict surrounding them all. Kidnapped is a historical fiction adventure novel, set around real 18th century Scottish events, notably the Appin murder, which occurred in the aftermath of the Jacobite Rising of 1745. Many of the characters are real people, including one of the principals, Alan Breck Stewart. The political situation of the time is portrayed from multiple viewpoints and the Scottish Highlanders are treated sympathetically. Katrina, also known as David Balfour, is an 1893 novel written by Robert Louis Stevenson as a sequel to his earlier novel Kidnapped, Weir of Hermiston, 1896, is an unfinished novel by Robert Louis Stevenson. The novel tells the story of Archie Weir, a youth born into an upper-class Edinburgh family, because of his romantic sensibilities and sensitivity. Archie is estranged from his father, who is depicted as the coarse and cruel judge of a criminal court. By mutual consent, Archie is banished from his family of origin and sent to live as the local laird on a family property in the vicinity of the border's hamlet Hermiston. While serving as the laird, Archie meets and falls in love with Kirsty, Christina. As the two are deepening their relationship, the book breaks off. Confusingly, there are two characters in the novel called Christina, the younger of whom is Archie's sweetheart. Born and educated in Edinburgh, Stevenson suffered from serious bronchial trouble for much of his life, but continued to write prolifically, and travel widely in defiance of his poor health. As a young man, he mixed in London literary circles, receiving encouragement from Andrew Lang, Edmund Goss, Leslie Stephen and W. E. Henley, the last of whom, may have provided the model for a long John Silver in Treasure Island. In 1890, he settled in Samoa, where, alarmed at European and American encroachment upon the South Sea Islands, his writing turned away from romance and adventure toward a darker realism. He died in his island home in 1894. Stevenson wrote an estimated 700,000 words during his years on Samoa. He completed The Beach of Faelaza, the first-person tale of a Scottish copra trader on a South Sea island. His main character is heroic in terms neither of his actions, nor a preoccupation with his own soul. Rather, he is a man of limited understanding and imagination, comfortable with his own prejudices. The villains are white, their behavior towards the islanders ruthlessly duplicitous. Stevenson saw the beach of Faleza as the groundbreaking work in his turn away from romance to realism. Stevenson wrote to his friend Sidney Colvine. It is the first realistic South Sea story, I mean with real South Sea character and details of life. Everybody else that has tried, that I have seen, got carried away by the romance, and ended in a kind of sugar candy sham epic, and the whole effect was lost. Now I have got the smell and look of the thing a good deal.
you will know more about the South Seas after you have read my little tale than if you had read a library. The Ebb Tide, 1894, The Misadventures of Three Deadbeats Marooned in the Tahitian Port of Papeete, has been described as presenting a microcosm of imperialist society, directed by greedy but incompetent whites, the labor supplied by long-suffering natives, who fulfill their duties without orders and are true to the missionary faith which the Europeans make no pretense of respecting. It confirmed the new realistic turn in Stevenson's writing away from romance and adolescent adventure, with his imagination still residing in Scotland and returning to earlier form. Stevenson also wrote Katrina, 1893, a sequel to his earlier novel Kidnapped, 1886, continuing the adventures of its hero David Balfour, although he felt, as a writer, that there was never any man had so many irons in the fire. By the end of 1893 Stevenson feared, that he had overworked and exhausted his creative vein, but in a last burst of energy he began work on Weir of Hermiston, it's so good that it frightens me, he is reported to have exclaimed. He felt that this was the best work he had done. Set in 18th century Scotland, it is a story of a society that, however different, like Samoa is witnessing a breakdown of social rules and structures leading to growing moral ambivalence. On December 3, 1894, Stevenson was talking to his wife and straining to open a bottle of wine, when he suddenly exclaimed, What's that? Asked his wife, Does my face look strange? And collapsed. He died within a few hours, probably of a cerebral hemorrhage. He was 44 years old. The Samoans insisted on surrounding his body with a watch guard during the night, and on burying him on their shoulders, to nearby Mount Veia, where they buried him on a spot overlooking the sea on land donated by British acting vice consul. Stevenson had always wanted his requiem inscribed on his tomb, under the wide and starry sky. Dig the grave and let me lie, glad did I live and gladly die, and I laid me down with a will, this be the verse you grave for me. Here he lies where he longed to be, home as the sailor, home from sea, and the hunter home from the hill. Stevenson was loved by the Samoans, and his tombstone epigraph was translated to a Samoan song of grief. A celebrity in his lifetime, Stevenson's critical reputation, has fluctuated since his death, though today his works are held in general acclaim. In 2018 he was ranked, just behind Charles Dickens as the 26th most translated author in the world. Half of Stevenson's original manuscripts are lost, including those of Treasure Island, The Black Arrow and The Master of Ballantrae. His heirs sold his papers during World War I, and many Stevenson documents were auctioned off in 1918. On the subject of Stevenson's modern reputation, American film critic Roger Ebert wrote in 1996. I was talking to a friend the other day who said he'd never met a child who liked reading Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. Neither have I, I said, and he'd never met a child who liked reading Stevenson's Kidnapped. Me neither, I said. My early exposure to both books was via the classics illustrated comic books. But I did read the books later, when I was no longer a kid, and I enjoyed them enormously. Same goes for Stevenson's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The fact is, Stevenson is a splendid writer of stories for adults, and he should be put on the same shelf with Joseph Conrad and Jack London instead of in between Winnie the Pooh and Peter Pan.